President Rodrigo Duterte signs into law the expanded paid maternity leave to 105 days. Lawmakers say they are ready to specify and bear the amendments they made in the 2019 national budget. The Department of Transportation postpones the Tandansora flyover closure. And uh, Catriona Gray wears the Sampaguita-inspired terno for her homecoming parade. Good evening. The expanded maternity leave, which President Duterte signs into law, is a good news for working mothers. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Celerina Monte is a mother of two. She is a working mom and has been a journalist for 22 years. She is also taking a law course in a university. Upon hearing the news that the expanded maternity leave has been signed into law, she was elated. For her, a longer maternity leave will benefit the newborns more than the mothers. So, yung mga working mothers, kung bibigyan mo siya ng mas mahaba-habang time na mapadede nila yung kanilang mga anak, may mahabang vacation, at least mas maalagaan. Kasi yun nga, sab yung sabi ko kanina, yung panganak kasi, like ako, pareho akong cesarean. At mabilis yung recovery, yung pagka-opera sa'yo, medyo madaling makarecover. Pero ang importante kasi doon yung pagpapadedi mo ng anak, yung pag-aalaga mo muna sa kanya after mong maipanganak siya. Before, working mothers could take paid maternity leave for two months. But with the new law, Paid maternity leave is extended to 105 days or three and a half months in both the private and public sectors. There's also an option to extend the leave for 30 more days without pay, while solo mothers will get a 15-day additional leave. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea, for his part, confirmed President Duterte has signed the Expanded Maternity Leave Act yesterday. Senator Risa Ontiveros, the proponent of the law, welcomes the enactment of the expanded maternity leave. For the lady senator, this is a triumph for women. Meanwhile, the Duterte administration guarantees the newly enacted law will not impact the employment of women since discrimination is not allowed in the country. Yung dagdag ng maternity leave number of days as well as the benefits. That will only lessen the profits. Eh, laki naman ang profit talaga ng mga employers eh. Kung mga social service nila yun. Sir, confident po kayo na hindi mangyayari sa Pilipinas yung nangyayari sa ibang bansa na pinipigilan yung pag-hire ng mga kababaihan dahil sa ganong benefits? Aba eh, bawal ang discrimination sa atin. They will be account accountable to that. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said, however, there are employers' groups who are not in favor of the new law. But for him, this is not a reason for companies not to hire female employees. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, aims to finish the implementing rules and regulations in 45 days' time. Various women's groups will assist DOLE in completing the IRR. We will expedite the IRR. Uh -oh. And marami ng sectors nag-volunteer to contribute sa IRA. Eventually, they will accept na it's for the good of everybody, especially our women workers. It should encourage them. Kasi yung kanilang women are happy employees na. Oh, when you are a happy employer, employee, you work well. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Lawmakers are ready to show the amendments made in the 2019 national budget to the public. This after a budget watchdog challenged them to do so. Grace Cousin tells us why. Budget watchdog Social Watch Philippines dares Congress to open to the public all amendments made in the 2019 General Appropriations Act. This is to prevent corruptions and to ensure that there is no pork barrel. Based on the matrix given by House Committee on Appropriations Chairman Rolando Andaya Jr. to the media, Congress has made insertions in the 2019 national budget amounting to nearly 99 billion pesos. The document shows that lower house has recommended insertions amounting to 23 billion pesos, while Senate has 49 billion pesos. The bicameral conference committee on the other hand has 25 billion pesos realignment. But until now, Congress has not released any document pertaining to how they would spend the money.
mamahalaga kasi ng kanine item po ang ating mga budget items kasi nasa principio rin kasi yan ng transparency and accountability. Coop Not Co Partilist Representative Anthony Bravo, a member of the Bicameral Conference Committee, said they are ready to show the amendments on the budget to the public. He added that Appropriations Committee Chairman Rolando Andaya Jr. is also in favor of this. As of this point in time, we cannot show yet because uh, it's still in the process of printing. After the printing, then we will see what were the amendments that were incorporated and accepted by the President. Then we will show it to the public. Bravo clarifies that the insertions were added to the budget of several government agencies. The said fund will be taken from the agencies with excessive budget allocations. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The MMGA has put off the closure of the Tandansora flyover next week in accordance with the Quezon City Council's appeal. Instead of February 23, the MMDA will postpone the flyover closure to March 2. Joe Anano tells us why. To give more time for the conduct of information dissemination to motorists, commuters, and residents that will be affected by the closure of the Tandangsora flyover and its possible effect on traffic, the Department of Transportation, through the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA, has granted a request of the Quezon City Council to defer the closure of Tandangsora flyover. Instead of the previously announced schedule February 23, the MMDA has put it off to March 2 at 11 o'clock p.m. Nagkaroon po kami ng public hearing kahapon at nakita natin ng madaming pagkukulang pa sa preparations. So yung request po nila for a one-week extension has been granted. Within the one-week extension, the Quezon City government, in coordination with the MMDA, will conduct clearing operations along Congressional and Luzon avenues. These avenues will serve as alternate routes for affected motorists. Barangay officials will also inspect areas and ask their constituents to remove illegally parked vehicles. Illegal vendors that block roads will also be asked to remove their stalls. The group will also start installing traffic signs in various areas so that motorists can be aware of the new traffic scheme prior to the actual closure of the Tendangsora flyover. The barangay captains are able to identify possible alternate routes and as of uh, today, I know that there will be ocular inspections of these routes. No? The Punong Barangays will also be meeting with their stakeholders this weekend to disseminate the information. MMDA General Manager Jojo Garcia revealed the MRT7 contractor EEI Corporation has agreed to finance the possible construction of an elevated U-turn slot in Tandang Sora. The agency is expecting the finalized project layout and design of the proposed elevated U-turn slot by next week. The MMDA once again asked the public for understanding and to adjust their travel time in preparation for the expected heavy traffic once Tandang Sora flyover is close to motorists. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Department of Transportation is eyeing the groundbreaking of the Metro Manila subway system on February 27, 2019. DOTR announced the groundbreaking date as Transportation Secretary Arthur Tugade and other transportation officials are currently in Japan to inspect equipment and finalize the details of the said project. DOTR aims to have Metro Manila subway partial operations with three stations in North Avenue, Mindanao Avenue, and Tandansora by 2022 and will have its full operations in the year 2025. It will be connected to the Light Rail Transit or LRT Line 1 and Metro Rail Transit or MRT Line 3 and 7 through a common station. Overall, the multi-billion peso subway system will have 15 stations. From Quirino Highway to FTI and Ninoy Aquino International Airport or Naia Terminal 3 in Pasay City. Malacanang tells Miss Universe 2018 Katayona Gray to be educated first on the issue of minimum age of criminal liability. This is the response of the palace on the reported statement of Catriona to readjust the focus as to why juveniles are committing crimes. Despite this, Malacanang welcomes the concern of Miss Universe 2018 that she has shown towards the said issue. Lowering the age of criminal responsibility from 15 years old to 12 is currently being pushed in the Congress. Then, 
She should be educated. Ibig sabihin ng educated, she may, she may have been misinformed of the facts given that the opposition to the lowering comes from yung mga dating kritiko ng administration. <clears throat> but if you study the facts, so, yung sinasabi niya ng, yung sabi niya, focus on what? On focus on the problems? Eh, yeah. Kasama yun eh. When you lower <clears throat> the criminal liability, kasama yun, you're focusing as ang nagiging problema. The finalists of Wish Covery Season 2, the singer and the song, took the stage in Antipolo City ahead of the big night on Tuesday. They say they admire the concept of Wish Covery this season. Here's Mirasol Abogadil to tell us why. Before the grand vocal battle of the Wish Covery Season 2 grand finalists at the Big Dome on February 26, the eight chosen Wish Coveries got the chance to entertain Antipolo City last Tuesday night as they all got together and sang in front of a live audience. Each performed the song their respective composer Wish Coverer wrote specially for them. The eight singing gems discovered all over the country and in Canada expressed sundry feelings during the event. Nakaka-surprise po dahil um, yung mga activity nga nito is uh, never, hindi po namin in-expect. Actually, nakakakaba po na kantahin ko siya first time ng live po nang Pero at the same time, sobrang saya po. At sobrang nakakatuwa kasi ang gagaling po lahat ng composers na kasali po ngayon sa Wish Covery Season 2. Aside from the Wish Covery finalists' one-of-a-kind experiences, they will surely bring home with them gleeful and memorable moments they shared together despite the tight competition. We're all getting along, po, so um, that's one thing that I'm excited about. Because parang magalis na po ako my friendship, you know, my friendship na po ako dito. Sa ibang competition po kasi um parang mas pini pressure ka po nila. Tapos dito po hindi po parang in family po talaga. The finalists also admire the concept of Wish Covery Season 2, The Singer and the Song, another innovation from no other than the UNTV BMPI CEO president himself, Kuya Daniel Razon. Wish Covery Season 2 is probably one of the smartest concepts made. Kuya Daniel is very smart. Grab yung concept na ginawa niya. Kasi ang dami pong magagaling na singers all around the Philippines, pero walang chance na ma-discover. And Kuya Daniel Razon made that possible. So its charity component is another uniqueness of Wish Covery Season 2. Competition na na-join din ko po. Ito kasi may charity component. Ngayon pa lang po, panalo na po kami kasi makakapagbigay na po kami dun sa chosen beneficiary po. And as the Wish Covery Grand Finalists gear up for the big night, they can't help but express their gusto even before taking the Big Dome stage. Sobrang excited kasi... Uh, hindi ko po inasahan na makakanta po ako sa Araneta. Tapos ay sobrang happy. Grabe yung pressure talaga kasi Araneta na yun eh. Napakalaking um, stage na kakantahan ko na never in my entire life po na in-expect ko po mang mangyari lahat. <laughs> kasi po, it's just a dream lang po na naging nag-run po ng wish. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue.
Meanwhile, Meghan Markle's inner circle stepped out of the Mark Hotel into a rainy Manhattan Wednesday after attending a baby shower for the Duchess of Sussex. Human rights lawyer Amal Clooney led the group past news cameras and paparazzi. Tennis legend Serena Williams and Clooney were hosting a baby shower in Meghan's honor in the Mark's penthouse, which runs $75,000 US dollars per night. The hotel says the suite's 10,000 square feet or 929 square in meters makes it the largest hotel penthouse in the country. Markle is expecting her first child with Britain's Prince Harry in the spring. Up next on One News. President Duterte forms task force to speed up Manila Bay rehabilitation. And Catriona Gray charms her supporters as she wears the Sampaguita-inspired terno for her homecoming parade. Thank you for keeping me company in the first part of Wine News. More recent behind the stories with Angelo Castro III and William Theo after this quick break. I'm Rina Villamor Camara. Good evening. Welcome back to Hawaii News. We pick up from where Rina Villamor Camara left off. I'm Angelo Diego Castro III. And here are the headlines. You will not be issued an alien employment permit if the work that you will perform in the Philippines can be done by a Filipino. The Labor Department to inventory illegal foreign workers in the country. I am declaring war. I'm not declaring a punitive police action. It cannot help. But it won't help. So, early on I decided, but I think it'd be more, uh, well, I said, uh, harsher in the days to come. President Duterte warns to implement harsher and bloodier war against illicit drugs. The ILG Secretary Eduardo Año confirms the presence of Yemen suicide bombers in Mindanao. The Department of Labor and Employment, along with other government agencies, will begin an inventory of illegal foreign workers in the country. Meanwhile, the Labor Department has expressed that jobs suitable for Filipinos must not be given to foreign nationals. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLE, in cooperation with other government agencies, has formed a task force to identify the real number of illegal foreign workers in the country. According to Labor Secretary Silvestre Bellu III, they plan on coming up with the inventory in a month or even within only 15 days. This after the Labor Secretary's meeting with the Department of Finance, Department of Trade and Industry, the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or PAGCOR, and the Bureau of Immigration. Bawat agency may, may sarili silang inventory, hindi magkatugma, kagaya ng sa BID, ibang figure sila, ibang figures namin, iba ang BOGO, iba ang DTI. So we have to come up with a, a consolidated inventory. Data from Dollar show there are 169,000 foreign workers in the country, while there are 40 million Filipino workers. Secretary Bell pointed out that jobs must be given to foreign workers only when there are no available Filipino workers to do the jobs. This is why the Labor Secretary said foreign nationals who work in the Philippines as construction workers can be considered illegal workers. Oh, hindi pwede yun. Kayang kaya ng Pilipino yan. Dapat wala naman kami ni issue na AEP eh. Illegal yon, illegal, definitely illegal yon. During a Senate hearing this morning, Senator Joel Villanueva said there had been lapses in the issuance of special working permits or SWP. He reiterated that an SWP is only valid for three to six months, but there are foreign workers who get away with working continuously in the Philippines even with expired SWP. Sa Bureau of Immigration, sa Bureau of Immigration, um, napakadali makakuha nito nga special working permits. At uh, yung process nila, halos uh, hindi natin uh, ma-appreciate kung talaga bang uh, uh, tinutumbok nito yung uh, proteksyon ng ating mga kababayan na nakasaad sa ating konstitusyon. Senator Villanueva also proposed to remove the Bureau of Immigration's authority to issue special working permits. Wala ho silang kapasidad bilang uh, ahensya na event na ito ba ay uh, pupwede 
o, o pwedeng ibigay ba ito sa banyaga sapagkat hindi kayang punan ng ating mga kababayan. The Bureau of Immigration for their part are open to work closely with the Labor Department on this matter. Honestly, Your Honor, uh, we would welcome if uh, uh, other agencies would participate in the vetting of uh, uh, those applying for work, uh, especially foreign nationals. Uh, we have uh, guidelines uh, in the processing of uh, special work permits. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. President Rodrigo Duterte has ordered the creation of a task force that would hasten the rehabilitation and restoration of Manila Bay. Duterte, through Administrative Order 16, released on Thursday, formed a task force to ensure the complete restoration, rehabilitation, and conservation of Manila Bay's coastal and marine system. Environment Secretary Roy Simatu will chair the task force, while the secretaries of the Department of the Interior and Local Government and Department of Tourism will serve as vice chairpersons. 13 government agencies will serve as its members. After President Rodrigo Duterte signed the historic universal health care law, the health department, the Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, and several lawmakers have explained the content of the new law. Among the primary beneficiaries of the new law are patients in geographically depressed areas. Maya Bermudez tells us why. A wider coverage on free checkup, medication, and hospitalization. These are the promises of the universal health care law recently signed by President Rodrigo Duterte. But who will benefit from this new law? Hi, the Department of Health or Welcome DOH the, said patients in geographically Under depressed Secretary. areas that have no access to government health care services will benefit from the new measure. Suffice it to say that we will endeavor to ensure that the geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, uh, the upland barangays, the communities where we have the indigenous peoples, uh, and uh, uh, other uh, uh, living at the fringes of society, be given a priority. Under the universal health care law, all Filipinos will automatically become Philippine Health Insurance or PhilHealth members. The law's primary aim is to reduce the Filipinos' out-of-pocket expenses during hospitalization. Medical services in public hospitals will be free of charge. The health insurance company will shoulder expenses depending on the contributions from its direct contributors or employers, employees, OFWs, and everyone who pays health premiums, while indirect contributors such as senior citizens, PWDs, and indigent patients will also benefit from the said program. These shall include consultation fees, laboratory, laboratory tests, diagnostic procedures, and outpatient medicine. According to Health Secretary Francisco Duque III, even if the law has already been signed, its effects will not be felt yet as there are 180 days to complete its Implementing Rules and Regulations or IRR. So it's not as if just because this law was signed yesterday, you already see like magic tomorrow all barangays with sprouting health stations like mushrooms. Okay, it's not gonna happen like that. A whooping 257 billion pesos is needed to fund the universal health care program in its first year of implementation. Sin taxes from alcohol and liquors will also increase to fund the program. For the coming years, uh, with the additional uh, taxes that will be imposed no, from the uh, cigarettes and uh, alcoholic beverages, uh, ang uh, uh, actuarial na projection natin uh, masusustain. Uh, for the, that aside from the GAA, the budget coming from the DBM and the uh, premium collections na galing sa PhilHealth and other sources of funds, uh, definitely must sustain natin ito in, even in the year 2027. My Bermuda, ZUN News and Rescue, Manila. Political parties and candidates running in the May 2019 midterm elections may now avail of discounts for political advertisements with media outlets. This after President Rodrigo Duterte signed Republic Act No. 11207, 
or an act providing for reasonable rates for political advertisements. With this, candidates and political parties may avail of a 50% discount for television ads, which used to be 30%. A 40% discount for radio ads from a previous of 20% discount and a 10% discount on print media. The Department of the Interior and Local Government says more than 300 politicians give support to the new People's Army. With this, Interior Secretary Eduardo Año calls on the public not to vote for politicians in party list groups that back the NPA. Mirasola Bogodil will tell us why. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, has released a list of politicians who supported the New People's Army, or NPA, from 2016 to 2018. The DILG said there are 349 names on the list. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año added they are monitoring activities of the politicians on their list as the midterm elections draw near. The list composes of 11 governors, 5 vice governors, 10 board members, 55 mayors, 21 vice mayors, 41 councillors, 11 former public officials, 10 congressmen, 1 former congressman, and 176 barangay captains and barangay councillors. Secretary Año also said there are party list representatives who openly support the rebel group. With this, the Interior Secretary calls on the public not to vote for politicians and candidates who pay the rebel group for a permit to campaign. Hindi kailangang magbigay sa NPA ang ating mga kandidato para manalo. Dapat ang ating mga mamamayan ay maging uh, mapanuri at uh, maingat sa pagboto. Wag, wag, uh, wag iboboto isang kandidato dahil ito ay namimili ng boto at ito ay pinapayag ang kampanya ng MPA sa kanila. Kung baga, vote wisely. Yung talagang magdi-deliver at talagang magiging magaling na leader ng ating bayan. Based on information gathered by the DILG, the NPA asks for 20 million pesos for a permit to campaign from presidential candidates. 10 million pesos from vice presidential candidates, 2 to 5 million from senatorial bulls, 300 to 650,000 from those running for congressman and governor, 75 to 100,000 from those running for vice governor, 50 to 60,000 from those who are running for board membership, 200 to 500,000 from those running for city mayor and city vice mayor. 50 to 100,000 from municipal mayoral candidates. 25 to 50,000 from municipal vice mayoral candidates. 10 to 50,000 from those who are running for city councillors. And 5,000 to 25,000 for those running for municipal councillor. Ikaw ba papayag na yung mayor mo nagbabayad sa CPP and PA? Unang una, saan niya kukunin yung ipinambigay niya doon? Pangalawa, Kita mo naman yung influence ng CPP and PA later on pag nakaupo na siya. This must stop now. Most politicians who pay the NPA for a permit to campaign have been recorded in Region 5, Region 10, Region 11, and Region 2. The DILG is gathering evidence for its plan to file charges against such candidates, especially incumbent public officials. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV News and Rescue. President Rodrigo Duterte promises efforts in eradicating illegal drugs in the Philippines will be heightened. Astra Kadapan Jr. tells us why. Even more intensified anti-illegal drugs campaign. This is what President Rodrigo Duterte emphasized on Wednesday about his crackdown against illegal drug peddlers. I am declaring war. I am not declaring a punitive police action. It cannot help. It did want to help. So, early on I decided, but I think I'd be more, uh, well, I said, uh, harsher in the days to come. When asked how intensified the war on drugs will be, the president said in response, So is it going to be bloodier? I think so. President Duterte also vowed that he would not allow anyone destroy the country, especially the youth. do not with my country about drugs. You will destroy my country and I will kill you. I could not be more emphatic and be clearer about it. 
The president reiterated to continue the war on illegal drugs until the end of his term in 2022. It can be noted that President Duterte's war on drugs has raised criticism not only from his detractors but also from the international community. The president's statement also comes after a recent survey result revealed that 95% of Filipinos say it is important that illegal drug trade suspects be captured alive. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News & Rescue, Philippines. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año confirms that there is a foreign suicide bomber in Mindanao. Victor Cosare tells us why. The Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG confirms that a suicide bomber remains in Mindanao. DILG Secretary Eduardo Año said a Yemeni suicide bomber has been staying in the Philippines for more than a year now. He is married to a Tausug woman and has children. The identified Yemeni suicide bomber is with 10 other foreign terrorists from Indonesia, Pakistan, Egypt and Malaysia. The foreign terrorists are based in Basilan, Patikul and Maguindanao with some other local terrorists. Yung sinasabi natin suicide bombers na na-train, ito yung Yemeni. But there are foreign terrorists uh, who are also living in other parts of Mindanao. But we cannot say that he is, uh, no, he is a suicide bomber. No? Kasi foreign terrorists sila, they're, they're providing support, advices to the local Abu Sayyaf. But there's only suicide bombers na sila, except for this Arab-looking national inside Sabadjan camp. And you added that as of this time, they have no intel reports on any terroristic plans the Yemeni suicide bomber has. The DILG secretary meanwhile confirms that the 10-year-old daughter of the alleged suicide bombers that perpetrated the Mount Carmel Cathedral blast in Holosulu is now under the care of Abu Sayyaf leader Hatib Hajan Sawajan. He said the child is being trained to follow her alleged parents' footsteps. Well, you know, they, they believe this particular cause na... Uh, it's like ano, a cult, no? parang kulto, na they believe they'll go to heaven uh, if they die doing suicide bombing. You know, mahirap pa, pa baguhin yung pag-iisip na gano'n. Eh. Talagang dumating na sila sa kulto na that's the, their, their way of life. Victor Cosare, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. The works of Dutch post-impressionist painter Vincent van Gogh will take a new life in Paris. Here's why from Nina Armilio. Modern-day art patrons and enthusiasts will get the chance to enter the universe of 19th century painter Vincent van Gogh in Paris beginning Friday, February 22. Van Gogh's works such as Terror Night Over the Rhone, painted in 1888, and Churchyard in the Rain, created in 1883, are some of the highlights of the project. This digital exhibition that will showcase Van Gogh's Impressionism is directed by Gianfranco Iglianuzzi and set to music by Luca Longobardi. The exhibition uses AMEX technology, a system developed in 2012 to combine art and music in an immersive experience. The exhibition is the Atelier de Lumière's second project in Paris, following their opening in 2018 when they featured works of Gustave Klimt. Director of the Atelier de Lumière, Michel Cousigou, shares this art experience is different from classic museums. It to allow the visitors to really get inside the paintings and the direction of Gianfranco Yanucci tries to highlight all the creativity of Vincent van Gogh and that's the power of a digital exhibition to allow to enter into the paintings themselves. The Starry Night will run until December 31st, 2019. Nina Armilio, Huon TV, News and Rescue. Up next on Why News. Um, I think that uh, if, if, obviously, if, if we can persuade the soldiers to open the bridge, uh, that is the ideal outcome from this concert. British billionaire, billionaire Branson hopes Venezuela concert 
will break aid impasse at the country's international border. And Catriona Gray wears Sampaguita-inspired terno for a grand homecoming parade. And those are the reasons behind the stories in the second part of our newscast. Why News returns with William Theo. I'm Angelo Casa III. Good evening. <music>